Okay, we're back live at Oracle Open World. This is SiliconAngle.tv's coverage where all the action is happening in tech in San Francisco, California for Oracle Open World, day three of our extended coverage, exclusive coverage, blanket coverage of Oracle Open World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and our next guest is Jason Kotsafis, sorry, Kotsafis, <laughs> <laughs> who's with EMC. He is the Director of Strategic Alliances. Uh, Jason's been on theCUBE uh, a number of times. Uh, Jason, welcome back. Thank you, yeah, good to be back. Yeah, good to see you. Another, another Oracle Open World. Another and, one, uh, my 15th in a row, I think. Really? Yes. Well, yes. well wow, you've seen the, the changes over yes. the years. So, let's start there, talk about what, how this has evolved, uh, uh, and in particular, Oracle's sure. you know, position in the marketplace. Yeah, no, it's been amazing. I mean, in, in 96, when I first came to Oracle World, they were a software you know, database company, hadn't even really gotten into apps and EMC was a storage company. And now if you look at today, you know, the keynotes from Oracle this week, they've gone from software and apps into infrastructure. We've gone from hardware and storage up into software. So it's, a, it's an interesting example of how the industry's converging and, and, and you know, we're all building out complete infrastructure stacks today. Yeah, I mean, what's the relationship with Oracle? I mean, you wouldn't have been at a, a Sun conference <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> right. You know, but in essence, you know, part of this is, uh, is Sun, but uh, what's yeah. the relationship with Oracle these it, days? It's great, I mean, you know, there's obviously co-opetition with every, um, most IT vendors today, and EMC and Oracle are no exception, and what brings us back to Oracle World is really the fact that we have 70,000 customers together, and most of them are going to be here uh, at the show, and they want, to hear from EMC and Oracle as they run Oracle applications, middleware, and database software on EMC infrastructure, how we're going to help them, how we're going to help them with the challenges they have and, and integration and support. Um, and so the relationship today is, is you know, a balance of, in some areas we do compete, but in other areas we actually um, still do very good engineering together. Um, and today, actually, we announced a good example of that around data integrity. Well, talk about that. What, what did you announce? Yeah, so today we, one of the challenges on a lot of Oracle customer environments is data corruption, silent data corruption. So after a piece of data leaves the Oracle database, makes its way through the stack towards storage, it can get corrupted as it passes through HBAs, the network, and other components. And when it gets to the storage system, it would be really nice if we could check it and make sure that it's the same data that we got from Oracle when it left the database. And so we've, we've actually engineered with Oracle and Emulex from the HBA to check the Oracle data as it moves through the stack, make sure it hasn't been corrupted. Yeah, I hear, you hear a little bit about silent data corruption, but it's like this insidious yes. you know, evil yes. that, uh, that a lot of customers just don't even realize is going on out yeah. there, right? Yeah, it's true, and it's really a factor of scale. You know, the larger your Oracle environments are, it's going to happen as a matter of um, probability. And so it's, um, and, if, and if it impacts your, if it gets into storage, and it's moved around the data center, it can cause a lot of impact. I think that's an important point. I mean, yeah. essentially what you're saying is that the, the problem, because of the data growth, the amount yes. of data that we're managing, the probability of having some type of silent data corruption is, is you know, approaching a near certainty. Yeah, and, we, and we've always done a great job within our platforms to protect against that. The key now is that we can detect it much sooner, um, even before it gets to the storage array because of our integration with Oracle. And so that means what? Uh, uh, better performance, uh, less overhead? Yeah, it, uh, means, it means detecting the corruption uh, sooner so you can resolve it sooner. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. sleep better. Sleep better, keep, your, keep it up and available. Yeah. So. So interesting to uh, see the themes and the messages at this event. I yes. mean, you're hearing a lot about cloud. Yes. Maybe we start there. You guys you know, hopped on a cloud bandwagon pretty early. We did, And yes. the big data bandwagon, we'll talk about that. But uh, what do you make of Oracle's entrance into the cloud? Well, I think it was inevitable. You know, it was interesting, a couple years ago, Larry said the cloud's nothing more than the internet. And um, he, he kind of resisted that, that message for a while, but um, I think you know, everybody has to have a cloud story today, and, and um, when, I, when I listen to Oracle's story, it's as much as they say it's about application choice and choice of deployment, behind that, he said yesterday in his keynote, it's very much about having the right stack, and that stack in their view is Oracle. So it's an interesting approach. Yeah, it's clear. You know, it's funny, we had, uh, Jason, we had um, <laughs> Scott McNeely on at theCUBE at okay. uh, EMC World this year, remember John? And he said, <laughs> He looked at the camera and he said, I should have just called it cloud. <laughs> 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 the right. network is the computer, and so, uh, <laughs> and so here we are. But I think you're right, it, it, it was interesting because Jeremy, first of all, Joe Tucci was very respectful, yes, as course. you'd expect. I've called him the godfather of the, 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 the IT industry, and he was kind of a vuncular up there. 
Uh, but Jeremy did take a little tongue in cheek uh -huh. at Oracle saying uh, choice and flexibility, or the, yeah, cho choice and flexibility, not something you've heard much about this week. Yes. Larry's response was, we give you choice because we write right. everything in Java, if you yes. heard his keynote. So it's, it's always interesting to see Oracle, in particular Larry, take what's perceived as their weakness yes. and turn it into a strength. Everything's written in Java. If, yes. if you use Oracle Fusion apps, yes. you know. I think all their Fusion choice the is very much an apps message, but the infrastructure is very much an Oracle message. Well, today, yeah. that's right. <laughs> and, and I mean, you think about, uh, well, we followed the, uh, the VCE and VBlock trend. Yes. And we've often said, well, VCE was first, but really Exadata was sort of the first, you know, sort of converged infrastructure, if you yes. will, by definition. And it's really not general purpose. It's not, you know, and even though VBlock is uh, any color you want, as long as it's black, right. it's, you know, <laughs> it's, well, it's part of a VMware ecosystem, which is, I think, generally considered fairly open. Yeah. Um, and so I guess the, the, the question is, how do you compare and contrast what you guys are doing mm -hmm. uh, with something like VBlock versus uh, an Exadata? That's approach? a great question. I, I think it's pretty simple. You know, we, everybody wants to move to standardization in the cloud. I think that's something everybody agrees on, whether it's Oracle or EMC or whoever. The, the question will be where you want to standardize. And our view at EMC is most customers, and there have been surveys about this with IOUG and others, you know, over 90% of customers run multiple databases, multiple applications, multiple operating systems. So where we've kind of drawn the line in the standardization is at the hypervisor level, but openness for database and applications that you want to run. I think Oracle's taken it a little bit further up the stack and said standardization up to in including the Oracle database and middleware layer. And so obviously that's in their interest because they sell those technologies. But um, from an EMC perspective, we're, we, we, we have a separation where we're more open and around different database types, different middleware, different applications, et cetera. You know, DB2, SQL Server. Right, and then of course there's vSpecs was actually a response yes. to that standardization at the, uh, the, the VMware level. That's You've right. got alternatives there. Some trade-offs, yeah, maybe not the single block, but. Yeah, vSpecs gives you that standardization, but then gives you a little bit more choice on you can choose the network, you can choose the server, you can even choose the hypervisor. So vBlock's all about VMware, and if you go to vSpecs, you can actually look at Hyper-V, for example, from Microsoft, which is very common in the mid-market for us. Um, and you can also look at different networks. You can use Brocade or Cisco. Yeah, that whole converged infrastructure space has been pretty interesting. We, we looked at that in some detail and, and sized the market, you know, roughly. It's just an enormous TAM. I mean, essentially it's everything. We yes. Figured, we figured it's about a $400 billion TAM. Mm -hmm. um, give us an update on, on what's going on there. What are the, what are the, what are the partners saying, you know, in terms of that whole converged space? So, converged infrastructure is, is a big trend. Um, we work with, you know, as you know, all the leading network companies, virtualization. Um, and we see a lot of customers wanting to converge down their network protocols, their storage infrastructure, um, their applications, their databases. For us, that leads to the really the need for tiering storage. And that was a big theme you heard yesterday in the keynote is, if you're going to put more applications and more databases on less and more converged infrastructure, it's going to put pressure on the storage. And the storage needs to be able to react and tune itself automatically. You don't want to have to have database administrators and apps administrators waiting for the storage admin to retune and reconfigure the storage. So we put a lot of effort into automating that. And then as Jeremy talked about, inserting flash technology at the right layers to really boost that performance. Um, that's really where we're, our play is in convergence right now. Excellent. So you said it's the 15th year in a row at Oracle Open World. <laughs> um, uh, well, here's wishing you 15 more, I think. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, but where do you see this going? I mean, look out, you know, put on your, your Mm -hmm. Break out the binoculars, just five years out. You know, what, do you what do you think the industry's going to look like in, in five years, in, in generally, and then specifically, what do you think EMC and Oracle will be? I, I think, so on the first question, I, I think one theme that you're going to continue to see is consolidation. You know, we, even the last several years, we've seen a lot of acquisitions, a lot of consolidation, um, and you know, down to a handful of really big, complete IT players. I think that's going to continue. Um, I think a lot of those acquisitions in the future are going to be around big data. You know, over the last couple of years, they've been around virtualization and cloud and things like that. Um, so I think that trend's going to continue. I think EMC and Oracle, um, it's going to be a lot of the same in that we're going to have strong overlap in customers. We're going to have customers running Oracle software and EMC infrastructure. Um, and we're going to have to work together to, to help those customers. Um, and we're going to see, you know, 
continued uh, overlap in product sets as well, not just with EMC and Oracle, but with Oracle and all of their other partners. I think that's going to continue as well. Jason, I want to ask you, um, yeah. kind of more of a big picture. It's our third year here, our third year doing live uh, the Cube here. And the mood has changed from three years ago. I mean, our first time here, it, we were kind of in a guerrilla way, kind of snuck in right. with Cube Logic here, and now we're formalizing it. But the mood was like, Oracle's making moves, and Oracle's so big, when they move the battleship or the aircraft carrier, it's, it moves them a lot, yep. right? and a lot of drag to it. <laughs> and money is affected, people's businesses are affected. Last year it was like, okay, cloud, kind of hype, okay, Larry's kind of putting lipstick on a pig, that's what we were talking about. Um, this year we followed through, it's a little bit different in the sense that people are, have more clarity around it. Yes. Do you agree with that? Um, that statement that there's been this Oracle quickly retooling, and um, do you agree with that? And do you think, what do you think their next steps are relative to the messaging? Obviously they want to go. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You know, an analogy I'll draw is EMC. In the early 2000s, you know, when I was at EMC, we acquired Data General. And we evolved the Clarion product line, and now that's the VNX, a lot of the VNX product line. And when you buy a very large company like we did, it takes a couple of years to ingest it, adapt it into your company. And, and Oracle went through a similar um, process with Sun. And I think it took them a couple of years to get, you know, the Sun, the Sun hardware business as part of their core message. You know, going from a software company into a hardware company is a big, big move. And I think last year it was all about exadata, stack, hardware, hardware. Even Larry's keynote on Sunday last year was all about hardware. I think this year they've now taken it to cloud and they started to take it to big data. And I think, I think next year they're probably going to continue along those lines and maybe even do a little bit more about big data. One of the things that Larry said in his keynote is big data meet big iron. Yep. Do you think that big data and big iron are hand in glove or is big iron <laughs> antithetical to big data? I think it depends on um, the definition of big iron. For us, it's less about, you know, as Jeremy said yesterday in his keynote, big data is about the result. And Customers want the infrastructure that's going to give them the, the result and the performance that they need. Now, we have different ways of doing that. You know, we obviously have the platform to scale out and meet that demand with Isilon. We feel that you need a parallel scale out architecture for that. And then you need the right platform to crunch the analytics and get the result, which is green plum for us. Um, Oracle's positioning that as one stack today with X, Exadata and Exalytics. Um, so, you know, I think Big Iron, I don't know if it's big as much as it needs to be fast and it needs to scale. Um, now, whether what size that comes in or how it scales, you know, is, we have different views on that, obviously. Yeah. All right, Jason, well listen, yeah. thanks very much for coming on theCUBE EMC. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, I love, the, you know, the cloud meets big data and then here we are two or three years later and yeah. Oracle's you know, floating right in, to riding that wave. The cloud so, meets uh, big iron, Larry's big yeah. uh, <laughs> slogan last night, so, you know, yes. copying your moves. And what's great about EMC Day was a, uh, uh, totally trumped Larry's big data demo. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Jeremy, yeah. Um, good job. So EMC, yeah. got to love you guys for how you've grown your company. It's fantastic. Thank okay, you. this is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is our flagship program. Go out to the events. We track the signal from the noise. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks.